In this video, we're gonna show you five keto recipes using daikon. So a little bit ago, Sarah purchased about 500 pounds of daikon from her grocery store and handed half of them to me and said, here, do something with this. And I said, okay. So in this video, we're gonna go over five ways that we've used this vegetable. And it's a very versatile vegetable if you're looking to replace potatoes on keto. How well? Well, that will vary. Yeah. But before we get into it, we're gonna talk about seed. Who is the sponsor of this video? Sarah and I have been keto since 2019, and that was the first time in our lives that we actually prioritized our health. And prioritizing our health means prioritizing our gut health, and that's where seed comes in. Ever since we started taking seed regularly, we have definitely seen improvements in our digestion and bloating. DSO-1 is formulated with 24 strains of bacteria that support your gut, skin, and heart health. And all of these 24 strains have been both clinically and scientifically studied. And if you didn't know, the journey for these bacteria is actually a hostile one because you have tons of acids and bile salts in your stomach. But because of Seed's BioCap capsule in capsule design, it protects the bacteria inside, allowing them to reach your colon alive. Seed comes in a beautiful glass storage container that you can keep at home. It does not have to be refrigerated. And it also comes with a glass travel vial for on the go. So click the link in our description and use code KETOTWINS25 and you're gonna get 25% off of Seed. So a little bit more about daikon radishes. Daikon radishes are also known as white radishes or Japanese radishes, and they're a type of radishes characterized by their large size and white flesh. That is the actual description, I'm not making this up. They are very, very low in calories. About 100 grams of daikon radish is about 18 calories, which is pretty much yeah. nothing. And they have about 4.1 grams of total carbs, but it has 1.6 grams of fiber, so it has about 2.5 net carbs per cup of daikon, so it's very low. Mm -hmm. I decided my first recipe that I wanted to try was a redo of a recipe that we have tried before, and that is for daikon fries. And I figured, since I now have a new air fryer at home, that I wanted to try air fryer daikon fries because I thought this has got to be the time where I can get a crispy daikon. Because we have tried daikon fries in the past, but they were just kind of floppity and soft. and. That's not what I'm looking for. So what I did was I cut the daikon into matchstick sized fries. They're actually large. And then I put them in a bowl with a bunch of salt on it and I left it for about 45 minutes covered. And then you can start to see the water kind of draining out of the daikon to the bottom of the bowl. But I wanted to make extra sure that it was, uh, most of the water was out of the daikon. So I ended up laying them out on paper towel. And I thought for sure, these are gonna be crispy. They're gonna be crunchy. They're gonna be daikon fries. I sprayed them with oil and a bunch of seasoning and I placed them carefully on a pan and I stuck it in the air fryer at 400 degrees because I figured that was what the recipe said. And I figured at that heat, it's gotta be crispy and crunchy. Mm. So about five minutes later, I took them out and I flipped them painstakingly, which took forever. And I put them back in for five or six minutes to which they turned a really nice brown color. So I sat down to eat my daikon fries and I decided to eat it with a bunch of truff mayo and also ranch. And so I went to bite the first one and it was floppy. And you were immediately disappointed. And yeah, I honestly was. It didn't really make a difference from the last time that we cooked them in the oven. Because they are like 95% water, you're never gonna get a crispy or crunchy texture. Mm. And that's it. Even Heavenly Fans keto french fries are way like more satisfying as a fry replacement than that. So I was then on the search for another daikon recipe that I thought would um, satisfy me. Yeah. Well, um, for my recipe, I actually made a soup that I make all the time in the winter. Um, I normally use cauliflower in the soup, but I decided to switch it up and use daikon as the potato or element, if you will. And it's called Sarah's Tuscan Soup. I don't know where I got the name from. I think it's inspired by um, a soup that's at Olive Garden. Super Toscana. Yeah, super yeah, super Toscana. Super Toscana. <laughs> so this soup is really yummy. It has one pound of Italian sauce in there that you're gonna go ahead and put at the bottom of a soup pot, and you're gonna render that sausage down. I added in half a large onion, and then I peeled my daikon. I would like to make sure that you peel it because it has all these weird little hairs and you know they roots, have roots and dirt, dirt and stuff like that. You don't want that in your soup. And then I cut it into dice cubes that were like half an inch. And you're gonna add that in there because you wanna start sauteing the daikon because daikon takes a while to cook down. It's gonna cook additionally when you go ahead and you add in your chicken broth. 
use Better Than Bouillon. Better Than Bouillon, I love that stuff. Added that in there. And you kind of cook it for about 20 minutes and it becomes nice and boiling. And then I added 16 ounces of frozen spinach to the pot and then let it simmer for another, you know, 10 minutes or so until the daikon or fork tender. I added in, just to finish it off, half a cup of heavy cream. I've seen some recipes with like two cups of heavy cream. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it needs that much. So then I just plated it up with some Parmesan cheese on top and it was super delicious. It was nice and hot on a cold winter day in Chicago and my husband enjoyed it. I do love the soup. I definitely think it was a great addition to the soup and it's the perfect like potato replacement um, for this recipe. So I was disappointed with the daikon fries and I wanted to give up on this experiment, but I didn't because I don't like to give up. I came across a recipe for potato salad that was a little bit different and it was for a jalapeno popper potato salad and I thought, okay, I'm going to try this recipe but I'm going to put daikon instead of potatoes. Mm. So I peeled the daikon, cut it up into small ish pieces. Some of them are way too big. You should probably make your daikon for this recipe about half of an inch or smaller. Mm -hmm. And so I boiled it forever. It felt like 20-30 minutes until it was fork tender and some of the pieces still were not as tender as I would have preferred. I cooked up some bacon, about three or four pieces of bacon, let that off to the side. And then I started adding together the ingredients for like, not the base, but whatever you would call like the mixture that you toss your potatoes in for potato salad. The sauce. Four ounces of cream cheese, some mayo, garlic powder, black pepper. I took some mild pickled jalapenos and I cut those up and added those in. And then I added in the daikon that was draining off to the side. I tossed that in. And then I added in some green onion and shredded Mexican blend cheese. Toss that all together. And then I placed some fresh jalapeno slices on top, which was a terrible mistake because I was lazy at that point and I cut the jalapenos with my bare hands and then proceeded to rub my eyes and then got some in my mouth. And then I had to film myself eating this jalapeno popper daikon salad and I liked it a lot and it was very filling even mm. though there's not that many calories in the daikon. The calories actually come from the mayo mm -hmm. and the cream cheese and stuff like that. I wish that I would have cooked the daikon a little bit more until it was way more tender and I should have been more patient with that but I really mm. like that recipe and I would definitely make it again and I think this is where daikon really makes a good replacement as a potato and not so much like the fries and the air fryer yeah. versions. Well what about um, the German potato salad? Do you think that the daikon would be a good substitute because we used like those little red Radishes. Right, and that one is really good because it's got like bacon mm -hmm. fat and um, mustard and vinegar mm -hmm. as the base instead of like a creamy potato salad. That one is a very, very good recipe and we should definitely try it with this. We can leave that one linked below. That's it's good. definitely good for like a picnic or to have alongside a sandwich or something like that. So I was scrolling on TikTok, trying to find some inspiration for my next dish and I came across this one by Tasty Japan. So this was a daikon roll with pork on it. And I was really looking for something where I could enjoy the taste of daikon itself, something simpler. And pretty much what it was was coins of daikon that were wrapped in pork belly and then sauteed in a soy sauce mixture. And I thought this was really yummy, but I didn't have pork belly, but I did have bacon, so that's what I used. My husband said that they were too thick. So if <laughs> I were gonna do this again, I would make more but I would make them like one inch thick because you do really want to be able to saute and cook through that daikon. Tasty Japan suggested that you kind of cook the coins in the microwave for about four minutes. And I think it did really help to take away the rawness of it before even sauteing it in the pan. In retrospect, I would say that you could probably do two pieces of bacon mm -hmm. around each disc because you know, the bacon shrinks and right. then you have a lot of daikon and not enough meat. So off to the side, um, they did use mirin in their recipe from Tasty Japan. I don't have mirin, so I added two tablespoons of soy sauce and two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar to a little ramekin. And then I turned down the heat on my pan and let it cool down a little bit before adding in the soy sauce. Otherwise, when you add it, it's just gonna go everywhere. I added in some butter just to finish it off because I saw some other people add butter to their recipes. And I let these cook down until it looked like the daikon had actually absorbed the mixture. So I plated it up and I topped it with a little bit of minced green onion and I served it alongside some kimchi and I thought it was super delicious. Like I said, I think I could have gone a little bit heavier with the bacon, maybe wrap the entire thing in bacon 
and it would have been even better. But it definitely reminded me of these little appetizers that my mom used to make growing up, the bacon wrapped chestnuts, water chestnuts. Mm -hmm. It tasted like that, but a bigger size. And it was just a little really light dish and I really enjoyed it. And of course, the introduction that we had to daikon was when we made a daikon au gratin. And that was a couple of years ago. Yeah. And it worked out so well. You have to slice the daikon pretty thin, but you layer it and then you put cream and cheese. And we served it alongside um, a steak. And we really could not tell the difference between that and potatoes. It's, it was so delicious. And um, if you guys wanna see that video, we can link that one after this video. Some of these recipes were better than others, yeah. I would say. But I would say if you're looking for a potato replacement for, as a stew or in a casserole, then daikon is gonna be the best choice for you rather than using like little radishes because this is the perfect vehicle for that type of thing. If anybody figures out how to fry daikon mm -hmm. and make them crispy, let me know. I just don't think it's possible at this point. And if you're ready to try seed, make sure to use our special link, linked in the description and code KETOTWINS25 to get 20 25% off of seed. And if you want to see that daikon au gratin recipe, you can click right here and we will see you over there. Anyway, I'm Emily. And I'm Sarah. And, and we, we are the Keto Twins signing out. out.